team of the thought leadership group of technology professionals that was founded last year, alongside um, works alongside our um, sister uh, network, the HR transformation network. Because I'm also director of a recruitment company called Annapurna, and we do HR and IT recruitment, and we we use our networks to uh, get out there and provide services for the community that other agencies do. We've got about 600 members now, all through development manager, infrastructure manager, project manager up upwards. Um, and it's our fourth physical meeting today. Uh, as well as the physical meetings, we have um, a group that sits on LinkedIn. So um, we have updates that go on there all the time, different people, different speakers, different thought leaders posting content. And then we also have um, a TV channel, which we're just about to launch. Um, it's a multimedia uh, website where we, have, we host all the content, all the speeches, all the talks. Um, and also we want to be interviewing you know, CTO or people like yourself about current trends in your business, things you're interested in, things you're passionate about, to be part of the television channel. We also have a VIP community um, where we post all um, uh, exclusive content for people like yourselves. The talk today is at a very high level. And before I dive into it, into too much detail, I would like to explain a little bit of where I'm coming from. The thing is, we started this consultancy with an idea in mind that we didn't want to do any specific technologies or be associated with any specific vendors. So then the question then becomes, when you're speaking to uh, people like yourselves who are deciding, do I want to spend money on these consultants? Um, what value do I ever get back from? Okay, so what is the goal of IT? What do we do? Does anyone want to postulate uh, what the goal is of what we do. What, why do we do this crazy, stressful job? To deliver for the customer. Deliver for the customer. Very good. Like that one. Yeah. Any, 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 any practices on deliver for the customer? I think it's just one of the elements, uh, uh, one of the components of a business strategy. That's all. Absolutely. It is, but it's a key component. Yeah, yeah. Is a component. Yeah, it, it, it usually all underpins. All the components are supporting all the chat. Like that. Component is a good one, right? So, and that's an important differentiator. It's not just an underpin. To sort of simplify it ever so slightly, it's to deliver value, whatever value is. Um, unfortunately, what IT delivery tends to look a bit more like is a bit more like this. I like to think that as someone up here is uh, desperately trying to get back there, and um, they're pretty much the unfortunate individual that everyone's pointing at and saying he's to blame. Whilst teamwork is a very key uh, aspect of any IT delivery and IT delivery is about people, um, frequently the emphasis is on work. But really, as I keep saying, it's about delivering something of value. Um, but these are some of the principles from the Agile Manifesto. The problem I've always had with them is they don't emphasize for me what really matters. Because um, what does an ideal IT delivery process look like? It's supposed to be a light bulb. <laughs> uh, yeah, miracle. Uh, which currency is the most prominent in the room? Probably that one. Okay, that's it, right? That's what we do. Um, of course, that's not what we do. What we do is deviate a lot from that. But the ideal process is very much like that. The, the ideal process, certainly in uh, an awful lot of um, senior management's minds, are um, you have an idea, and really it's trying to turn that idea into something valuable with as minimal steps involved as possible. Now, that's very, very oversimplified by looking at things because you have all these horrible things like. Um, maintenance, and you have, you know, anyone, anyone had the uh, excuse of technical debt has come in. So all of these things work to upset this constant delivery of something valuable. Okay, so trying to add value to those statements is fairly simple actually, because they're close. Um, I've extended the working software over comprehensive docs to value delivered over working software. So the key one here, I think, is technology is a value engine, not a cost center. That's the tough funding part of this. That's the thought I want to leave you with, is that we shouldn't be thought of as cost. I suggest 
that our goal should be to continuously deliver something of value. For a reasonable, reasonable is obviously debatable, reasonable operation in order to meet the demands of our customers. How do we fill this gap? How do we capture value? Well, if we look at a modern software delivery, IT delivery process, a little more detail than I did deliver. Um, it tends to be a collection of loops, right? So you sort of start with this thing of, well, someone, there's demand. <coughs> I apologize for my, my handwriting in advance. There's demand, something's wanted, desired, perhaps captured incredibly blurry. That moves generally into some sort of specification, specification of need, if you like. Now, whether you're doing this as automated tests or whatever, I mean, if you've heard of acceptance test-driven development, that's kind of where this is, specification by example. It's not a technique to elicit good specs that drive the process. The idea being that there are feedback loops the whole time. So, in TDD, we're getting feedback that we're writing the software that's only necessary. Um, there's also a feedback loop there in terms of the specification. There better be a feedback loop here that can drive you around. Um, there's one thing that loop that's hardly ever there. And that, well, certainly not the IT, what we in IT are aware of anyway, which is the feedback loop between here. This, this feedback loop is sorely missing, and it, because it's a blurry one, it's a hard one to capture and it's a hard one to test. So, what I would say this is, is some form of value measurement. Value being the delivery that meets the demand. So, I guess the yeah, one underlying thing here is you can see that acceptance isn't value. Acceptance just says we, what we thought we were supposed to do, we think we've done. There's something missing. That's not enough. Often ignored entirely is the in order to line. Why? Why are we bothering to do this thing? I'll give you a concrete example. I was in uh, an organization that should remain nameless where um, a big plan had been put together. Now, people say in Agile software development, you don't plan. You do plan, you just know that the plan's going to change and probably completely. So a big plan had been put together. Quite a lot of money had been spent on the creation of a plan to meet a need. They were going to create some software that could reduce the process down dramatically in terms of how many people are required, how many um, steps are required, and different systems are there to be interacted with. <coughs> and luckily, one of the guys on the team said, why? Why are we doing this? He had been involved with the business, rest of the business, um, in this process. And he was saying, his point was, there doesn't have to be a software solution. And some of the biggest values can be had by changing the way that people work. Which is a whole set of skills that some of us aren't trained in. It's very important, and it comes from this end of the scale. If we, what happened is we moved rapidly along this way, Let's be honest, we're tech heads. We wanted technology at that point. Someone wanted to protect the budget as well. Um, but the truth was, this could have been done before we even got down there by some of the changing practices. Because this hadn't been asked, what are we trying to actually achieve? And I'm a big fan of moving this further up the order. So, how to get to value? There's a number of tools and techniques, and I can't go terribly deep on these, but these are things to look at. Okay, things to go for. Specification by example part, provides part of the answer. It's a technique for engaging in dialogue. Specifications don't deal with how, they do, to, they do deal with what I'd like. The nice thing is they, they push you towards thinking why, because they don't deal in the how. Effect maps um, is an even simpler tool in many respects. Effect maps are really trivial, but so powerful. Remember, we're trying to get to the definition of value. So, definition of value is the why. Why are we doing this? What do we want as an outcome? So, effect maps, I'm just trying to see if I get this right. Uh, I think it starts with what, then you move towards how, and then you move towards why. And you'll branch off into multiple of these, and you may branch off into many, many of these. 
And you can see that the most, absolutely the most important point you're trying to get to is this one. The other thing that I encourage you to go and have a quick look at um, is real options. Now, if you're used to real options in financial services or trading terms, then you're probably already there. You'll be familiar with, uh, before you make a decision on something or build a plan or whatever, you will be familiar with the idea of Something will have value, you'll know it will have value, and it'll also have a time span as to when it's relevant. Real options is just making an impact now into IT delivery. Now you'll hear the phrase, the last responsible moment to make a decision. Okay? One of the things you try and optimize for, sometimes if you're optimizing for flexibility and change, is pushing at your decisions to build something to the last responsible moment. The argument of real options is that's the first irresponsible moment to make a decision. Very powerful technique for essentially, once you've figured out what value you want, scheduling it in, understanding when commitments have to be made. The idea of automated testing of value, now this is something I've implemented a couple of times, where possible, to actually prove, provide a dashboard that says that thing we changed, it's had the impact we wanted. Okay, so the idea is with value, you have a tool to say, we did this. This is our progress, it's a, a real tangible progress measurement. That's why it's worth the most effort, because if you want to go faster, if you want to get better at software delivery and motivate people, because it's all about people, demonstrating progress in terms of the value delivered, really, ideally testably, is, uh, is singularly one of the things I'm noticing actually hits that button. The value should be captured, traced, and used for feedback. It should not be hidden from the IT teams. Um, you can capture it using a number of techniques. I've talked about uh, effect maps and using real options to make things timely. Um, where possible, if you can document for execution so that you can actually run tests that test the value of what you've done. Not always possible, but if you can, that's a wonderful measure of progress. And I guess, yeah, just reiterating the point, value is something that I think shouldn't ignore. Now, it's, it's what makes us part of the business.